My name is Don Ferrier with the Ferrier Companies out of Fort Worth, Dallas, Texas. We've been building with structural insulated panels since 1985. And we're here today just to give you a brief introduction to what it's like to build with structural insulated panels, or SIPs as they're often called. I've got a small section of a panel here. You see it's a composite panel made up of three basic components. You've got your outside facing. In this case, it's an oriented strand board, most commonly called an OSB. On both sides, you've got a rigid foam core. This one is actually a expanded polystyrene or EPS. These two are bonded with a structural adhesive on both faces here that, that combine to give this an extremely strong, durable panel. You also see different core materials. You may see an extruded polystyrene or XPS or some, some kind of polyurethane foam insulation in this. The individual components take on a compressive strength that's much greater than the individual parts with a diaphragm action that works very well as a shear wall in this application. Today we're going to look briefly at a set of plans to show you what to look for on the plans and then we're going to also look at a house that's under construction down on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi and give you some ideas of what to look for there. We appreciate you joining us and hope this is very helpful and educational to you. Now we're going to look at a set of plans for the house that we're at on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and look for what to look for for structural insulated panels. This home was designed around certain assumptions and criteria that are included in the structural notes. Including these, you're seeing the structural design load criteria. The floor was designed for 40 PSF. The roof was designed for 40 PSF. And the lateral loads were included, number one, a wind V, for here was for 140 mile an hour exposure C rating. The seismic, you can see the loads that were incorporated into that. The site, cl site classification is E. And this project is designed to resist the most critical effects resulting from the load combinations of section 1605.3 of the 2003 International Building Code. So there are basic assumptions made on every engineering of every panel, every SIP manufacturer has gone through very thorough, very rigorous, and very expensive structural testing on their panels to establish what their panel's structural capacities are. Those are always taken into account when you design the panels. When you do get into a high wind, Gulf Coast type area that exceeds those, then you'll always have an engineer stamp to look for. Structural Insulated Panel Association, or SEPA as it often is called, represents the panel industry. SEPA requires of the manufacturing members structural testing and data to be on file that can be reviewed and off of that data they design the different residential and commercial projects that they have. SEPA also requires their manufacturing members to have a third-party quality assurance program in place. Let's take a closer look at these plans and look at some details to look for. What we're seeing here is the standard first floor plan, which is just an architectural plan that you're used to seeing all the time. What we do in the panel industry is that we're then going to take that and we're going to convert that into a first floor plan, in this case called a key plan, of the different panel and its layout. You're seeing different dimensions of the panels to the windows and the panels to the splines, and this will work all the way around the house. And then we go from this detail of the overview over to some specific details in the house. This one is called out the different anchor bolt pattern that you need to have to hold down this bottom plate to the foundation. And this detail will vary from job to job as to what the engineer has spec. And one thing to realize is that this bottom plate and a structural insulated panel will be covered up once the SIP actually sets down on top of it. So the only time to inspect this, if you so choose to, is before the panels are actually placed. Now let's look at a few other details. We go from the foundation here and we're going up to our wall detail and this wall is going to be shown in two different details for connection of these wall panels here. This one calls a type S connection and a type L connection. And again your set of plans will spell out the type of connections for your plans, have details on the spacing of the attachment and then we go to the wall to the roof. The roof panel here has a detail for the screw pattern to screw the wall and the roof together. Again, your panel layout will have the specifics. 
Then we got an overview here. We're talking about everything from the slab to where the beams are spaced to hold this roof up. And again, every engineer, every set of drawings would have this for your plan so you could just review these and make sure that what you see there is understood. We also go over to one other detail here that we're looking at the wall sections and this shows you where the SIP panels are. Here we're looking at the A detail. This is the first wall. We got SIP panel A. This area right here is one panel is what we're seeing. These dash lines show that there's a spline there, a window, panel A2 and a window cut out there. Panel A4 is a header. Panel A5 is another small panel. A6 with a window. A7 with a window. And we're also showing here an engineering detail of a Simpson strap that holds this down to the foundation as well. So these are other details that you would have provided on your SIP panel drawings that'll give you basic information. Okay, we've looked at the plans. Now let's go look and see what the house looks like. 